Hello students, parents and carers. Welcome to stage six subject selection information evening. My name is Yogesh Mani and I'm the proud principal of Goldman High School. At Goldman High School, we aim to prepare our young people for their future rather than for our past. The interests of our students is always front and center of all our decision making. We continue to reconceive how we can best prepare our students for employment in a fast changing labor market and for active citizenship in a democratic society. The opportunity for students to select subjects that hold their interests and passions along with alignment with their future aspirations is a time that we look forward to as, as a school. At Goldman High, we have an abundance of extraordinary subject choices, which foster many diverse and authentic learning experiences for our students. As the world faces deep and widespread changes that are transforming our lives, schools are afforded opportunity to encourage students to choose more broadly, to focus on developing the dispositions of learning and the abilities to create, critically reflect, communicate, collaborate, and be creative. We encourage students to think through this stage of high school as infinite, that is, anything is possible in the learning journey. The HSE courses you choose will continue to build your understanding of yourself as a learner and gain confidence in your ability to develop cognitive, interpersonal and intrapersonal skills and aptitudes. Seek advice from teachers, students, parents, careers advisor and employers when thinking about what you might choose. Do the research on the subject that interests you, but also in those subjects that you might know nothing about you may surprise yourself on what they have to offer. The HSC is a milestone of attainment and successfully completing that step ensures success beyond school. Achievement and success are a combination of passion, effort, resilience and perseverance. I commend all students to develop your understanding of what is on offer, seek timely advice, feedback and open to new ideas, all of which are essential for ultimately improving your school journey. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Kennedy, Careers Advisor from Goulburn High School. Thank you for taking the time to view this quick review of subject selections, which has replaced our selection evening. I've tried to make this talk brief and yet still cover all the important information. But if you have any questions about the presentation or subject selections, I encourage you to make an appointment with me for you and your student in the next few weeks so that we can discuss individual student needs. All students in New South Wales are required by law to complete Year 10. Following that and until they are 17, students cannot leave school without evidence that they are continuing in education, are employed or doing a combination of these. It is safe to say that every aspect of what we do as a society has been impacted by COVID, including student choices. With higher unemployment than has been experienced for a very long time, you will need to support your student to make the wise choices moving forward to ensure that they are best placed to obtain secure and rewarding employment in the future. Education will play a key role in this and there has also never been greater opportunities available for students continue with education and training following the completion of Year 12. Students who decide to continue their education and training somewhere else or find 25 hours plus employment will need to provide evidence of this so that they can be unenrolled from school. If there is any chance your student will be returning to school, you will need to carefully consider the courses available and have a clear plan about what the student will achieve from the additional two years at school in order to make the most appropriate subject choices. Most students say that they are returning to school to finish Year 12. Students who leave school after completing Year 10 but before completing Year 12 will receive the New South Wales Record of School Achievement or ROSA. The ROSA is a cumulative credential in that it allows students to accumulate their academic results until they leave school. The ROSA records completed Year 10 and Year 11 courses and grades 
and participation in any incomplete Year 11 or 12 courses. Most students who stay to complete Year 12 will also hope to receive the High School Certificate or HSC. Each year we have a number of students who for a variety of reasons complete Year 12 without obtaining their HSC. This presentation aims to clarify the rules around obtaining the HSC to enable you and your student to make informed decisions. There are a number of key terms to understand when talking about subjects in Year 11 and 12. The first of these is units. Most HSC courses are worth two units. We offer a few extension courses which are the only one unit subjects available at Goulburn High School. Students in Year 11 study the preliminary year of their courses from Terms 1 to 3 in Year 11. They then commence to study the HSC component of their courses from Term 4, Year 11 until the end of Term 3, Year 12, with written exams scheduled during Term 4, Year 12. To get your high school certificate, you must complete at least 12 units of preliminary courses and 10 units of HSC courses, including English in both years. In most subjects, you need to satisfactorily complete the preliminary course before you can start the corresponding HSC course. Two unit courses account for 124 hours of study time in each year, which equates to eight 58 minutes per fortnight. The next key term is Board Developed Courses or BDCs. These are developed by NESA and all students in the state study the same course content and complete the same HSC examination. These courses may contribute to the calculation of a student's ATAR, which I will explain later. On the HSC ROSA, each board developed course will be reported as a mark out of 100, with 50 marks coming from the exam and 50 from a school generated assessment mark. Exams are not just written, as for some subjects the exam may include a practical item or performance that has been created over the four months of the HSC course. Many two unit courses written exams will be three hours in length. Some courses have optional exams, which again I will explain later. The second type of course is a board endorsed course. These courses have syllabuses endorsed by NESA to cater for a wide candidature in areas of specific need not served by board developed courses. These courses may offer an alternative career path for students, they do not have external examinations and they are reported on the HSC as a mark out of 100 completely generated by the school with no external assessment. Vocational Education and Training Courses, or VET courses, provide students with an opportunity to obtain nationally recognised qualifications alongside the HSC. Vocational courses provide industry specific skills and knowledge. VET courses can be either board developed or board endorsed courses. Board developed VET courses have mandatory work placement Students who do not complete the placement will not fulfil the requirements of the course, which may impact on the HSC eligibility. Board developed VET courses have optional HSC exams for inclusion in an ATAR. VET courses can be delivered at school or externally. TAFE Goulburn are offering a range of courses and students have been emailed details of the options available and the enrolment process. Paper copies are available from careers. Students could also consider TAFE Digital with a range of additional courses on offer. Students selecting these external courses do this separate to the school selection process. School-based trainee and apprenticeships provide students with an option to complete the HSC and either complete a traineeship or commence an apprenticeship at the same time. A wide range of training and course options are available and the best way to see them all is to visit the SBAT in New South Wales website. 
students are able to go to their paid employment one day per week. They will also complete their vocational study, which may mean attending TAFE for a day, a week, or maybe a block at a time. Or they may do online study with visits in the workplace from their trainer. A student's SBAT subject can count as one or two of their school courses. Whilst this is a great option for many students, finding an employer who is looking for an apprentice or trainee is often difficult. Students interested in this pathway should be working on it now. In addition to the ROSA, students will receive either an AQF certificate, which is awarded to students in VET courses who successfully complete all requirements of the AQF certificate, or a statement of attainment for those students who partially complete the certificate. There are a number of rules around subject selection in addition to needing 12 units for Year 11 and 10 for Year 12. All students must include at least three board developed courses in their subject selections to be eligible for the HSC. English is mandatory for the HSC and will be one of the BDC courses for all students. There are a number of English course options and details are included in the selection booklet. All other subjects are optional, including maths. Can I please urge careful consideration around the decision to select maths and whether or not maths is going to be important for future courses and employers. Most industries will require you to use maths in some form and indeed some employers, particularly those taking on apprentices, will not even interview students who haven't been studying maths. In addition, it will now be mandatory for students to study maths for several universities, regardless of the course they are studying. And those wanting to study to become a primary school teacher must also complete maths in the HSC. Students often say they are no good at maths. I ask them to consider that they will not get any better if they don't continue studying it. Over 130 courses are approved for study for the HSC. Goulburn High School are offering 45 courses for students to select from. Details of these are available in the Senior Handbook. Please note that only 20 to 25 of these courses will be successful. If a student really wants to study a subject that is not offered at Goulburn High School, there are a number of distance education options available including Aurora College and Finnegan School of Distance Education. While we're on this slide, please remember, all students must select at least three BDC subjects. These are the subjects above the red line on the back page of the handbook. There are additional requirements for ATAR students, which I will explain further. The topic of the ATAR is a pretty big one, and I'm going to go over it pretty quickly. So please seek clarification from UAC or make an appointment with me if you are thinking about including eligibility for an ATAR in your HSC. Unlike HSC marks, the ATAR or Australian Tertiary Admission Rank is a rank, not a mark. If your ATAR is 70, it means that your results rank you in the top 30% of students you commenced Year 7 with. The University Admission Centre, or UAC, calculate a student's ATAR based on their performance in the HSC. They also determine if a course can be included in the calculation of the ATAR. Board developed courses are divided into two categories. Category A courses have academic rigour and depth of knowledge to provide background for tertiary studies. Category B courses, whilst these subjects also contain high academic rigour, no more than two units of Category B courses can be included in the ATAR calculation. Examples include Human Services, Hospitality, English Studies and Math Standard 1. Students must complete the optional exams in these subjects for them to be included in the ATAR. 
Please note that while the ATAR is used for university admissions, it is not the only way students can get into university. Students without an ATAR or with poor ATARs may still be accepted to university straight after Year 12. And there are many, many alternate pathways to explore. For rural and regional schools, an average of 20% of HSC students will use their ATAR for direct entry to university. Selecting subjects that will make you eligible for an ATAR won't guarantee that you will get the ATAR you need to get into the course you want. This slide is a very quick summary of how marks translate to ATARs. HSC marks are reported between 50 and 100. They are reported in bands. As you can see, band 6 includes marks between 90 and 100 and so on. The average mark in the HSC is 75. The marks for a student's best 10 units are added together, then all students' marks are put in a line and ranked. Remembering that HSC marks are from 50 to 100 and the ATAR scale is from 0 to 99.95, the average HSC mark of 75 tends to be ranked with an ATAR of 50 to 55. This slide might help to explain. It is a real example of a student's HSC marks and how they translate into the ATAR. All but one of the student's marks are below the average HSC mark. UAC take these marks, scale them so that all subjects are equal and change them to a mark between 0 and 100. These are added together to enable the total student mark to then be ranked between 0 and 100. Please take on board this very clear message. Your ATAR isn't determined by the courses you study, but on how well you do in your courses. Please consider that if you choose to return to school, you are a full-time student. You cannot achieve your best if you are also working more than eight to 10 hours in a casual job. You have a lifetime to work. Make the most of this time to focus on learning. There exists a myth around scaling that students will achieve better results if they study academic subjects because UAC will scale the marks for these subjects much higher. This is incorrect. Please don't pay the scaling game. Scaling happens on a yearly basis and depends on the results of each cohort. So the answer to the questions, are certain courses always scaled up or down, is no. Do I get a better ATAR if I study hard courses or courses that are scaled up? No. In order to obtain the HSC, students must also demonstrate that they have achieved a minimum standard of ability in literacy and numeracy. The minimum standards tests are aimed at confirming that the student has the literacy and numeracy skills needed to function effectively in society. Students get up to five times per year to sit each minimum standards reading, writing or numeracy test. Students have been completing these tests in work education since term one and all students should have their results. Results for each test are reported from levels one to four. To pass, students must achieve a level three. Results are reported on their ROSA. Visit the NESSA site for further clarification. The decisions about which subjects to do and whether or not to get an ATAR should be based around research into possible career paths, leaving your options open. There are a range of resources available to support students in the decision-making process. Goulburn High Careers is a fabulous tool Make sure when looking at careers that you also reflect on the future employment options that exist in the industry. These are some resources I would suggest for students contemplating university study. The Job Jump link will enable you to find out subjects that you should be studying for the HSC if you wish to pursue certain university courses. VET Pathways provide almost 80% of our students' career paths. 
This fabulous resource will support parents in exploring VET pathways further. Job Jump also have a great tool for finding out which subjects should be studied for all career paths, not just university. All students have received a letter detailing the selection process, including their individual code. Ensure that you rank your subjects in the order that you would prefer to study them, as this will influence the timetable. Copy your subjects onto the back of the sheet, have it signed and returned to Mrs Kennedy. The decision about which courses will be delivered to Year 11 2021 will be based on the selections made by Year 10 students ensuring that the school is providing a broad and balanced curriculum to meet the needs of all students. Once subjects are finalised, they are placed into six lines. Students can only study one subject on each line. Once again, the decision about lines will be based on student initial selections. Where there is a class, the students will be placed in the course which has, was highest on their list. Reserve subjects are used to fill the empty lines, so it is important that you think carefully about your reserve subjects. In closing, can I ask that you please take time with this process. Use your selection booklet, talk with subject teachers and senior students, visit the resources suggested, and make an appointment or ring Mrs Kennedy. Thank you.